Arc Warden was already a reasonably strong hero and now in 727B he's received some very nice buffs and is actually now one of the stronger heroes in this patch. So here we're gonna see a game of Emo, the mid player from IG, playing the hero and we're gonna see how strong this hero can be even in games we don't have a very good start. Lessons that cannot be unlearned. Welcome to the Church of Obelis. My name is Yon. So in the mid lane on the start you can play quite aggressively here. You can see him already trading quite well using his Spark Wraith for last hitting and securing range creeps. And in terms of the item builds, he's just gone for a single Wraith Band. Wraith Band is like a reasonable item. The armor is nice in terms of trading here. But you don't want to have too many Wraith Bands because you want to go for an early Midas if possible. And you don't want to invest too much into early game items. Now I've made previous Arc Warden videos on this channel where I strongly urge people against buying Midas and I completely stand by those. Back in the context of those patches that was true. But now Midas has received two nice buffs. The XP gain has been increased and the cost has been decreased. And on top of that, the game is just uh, a bit slower than it used to be. Primarily because you can no longer lose your shrine until you lose one tier 2 tower. The landing stage is nothing unusual here. You just want to get as much farm as possible. You don't really care about killing the enemy. Sometimes we have some rotations coming in. You can get a kill with Flux and Spark Race. Which you know, does do a good amount of damage. If you can get an, an enemy isolated. But um, for the most part you're just interested in trading farm and uh, the way this thing has gone so far is um, it's okay. I mean this wind range is getting a bit more of the, out of the lane but it's uh, still sort of within the normal range. And you can see here he's got some extra items, some extra region, some tango, um, a mango here. Now he's getting boots. You don't want to be run down here. And there's a lot of heroes that can rotate into this mid lane. Particularly that tusk, that's quite dangerous, so extra move speed is important. Speaking of rotations, we see a TP coming in here out of Tower of Vision, so he goes on Arc Warden, and with the Snowball also coming in, there's no chance here. He doesn't even try to escape, just tries to get the Camel Wind Ranger, but it doesn't happen. So, not the best start. Also, Ward being dewarded now with this Sentry here. But um, that's just something that can happen. Aquaborn is very weak to rotation, that's always something you have to keep in mind. You can die very easily. Whenever you don't have vision of the enemy supports, you have to be very careful here. And you see he's actually standing directly under the tower, but still they can just go in with three people and get that kill. And see some support rotating in, but that is not going to go well for them. So see both of them are gonna die they they do get the one kill on on task but that's all it's a three for one exchange and the aqua comes back and plants this ward here unfortunately though there is a sentry right here so it's gonna get dewarded probably he thought that the ward was um, placed uh, somewhere here to deward that that uh, ward that was previously here um, but yeah, like that's uh, a bit of a cocky play to just place the ward here. And seeing so getting run on again, so you just have to be really, really careful about walking up here. Um, so it's had a, having a really bad start, and uh, if I, I chose that game just to, uh, to, to showcase how strong Arc Warden can be, even if you have a, a weak start. Because that's often something that's going to happen with this hero. You can definitely also have strong laning phases, but just you have very little defensive potential. Like if, if you dominate the lane, you can have really nice games and then you can win the game really hard, but oftentimes you can have these games where you really struggle at the start and uh, just have to scramble to find some farm. But while Ark Warden is struggling, the, other, the rest of his team is doing fairly well, especially this Klinks. So they come in here, rotate on the mid lane and take this tower. This is very important uh, rotation to do. This tower just has to fall early, that's so important. If you can get this tower at 8 minutes, it's gonna open up the map so much and it makes it a lot easier, especially for the Klinks to play the map. After dying once again, Emo changes his uh, queue from queuing up a hand of Midas to a drum. 
just gonna get both these items, but uh, the order you want to get them in depends on how the game is going. And here, in, in this situation, he sort of says, okay, I can't fight at all in the early game. I'm so weak, I just can't really help out my team. I just have to concentrate on my own farm. So it's gonna go for this Midas first. And obviously Midas is a great item. It uh, helps you a lot in your farming because you just get double the effect from your clone and from your main hero. And you can still, even though you're just uh, AFK farming, still use your clone to fight with your team. That's often something you're gonna do, just uh, farm with your hero and then send your clone to, uh, to dangerous places to fight. Especially if it's fighting the dead lane here. So he's going for this Midas. Uh, which is the pretty obviously a strong item on, on Arc Warden. After all the buffs, it's uh, usually an item you want to go for. Not necessarily an item you want to go for every game, but uh, I would say in like 80-90% uh, of, of Arc Warden games, you probably want to go for Midas nowadays with all the buffs. Uh, but then he's going to go for Drum. And Drum is actually a really strong item on, on Arc Warden. So, first of all, all the stats it gives are excellent, your movement speed, attributes, and mana region, all things that Arc Warden wants. You don't want like a huge mana region item, but you have some mana problems, and uh, taking that 1.5 mana region is uh, quite useful. But like the real reason you go for this item is for the active. So the active was even buffed in the last patch, and now gives 45 attack speed and 13% movement speed. The downside, of course, is that it has charges, only has six charges. After that, the item becomes kind of subpar. But with Arc Warden, you can just activate this item on your clone, and your clone is always going to start with the same number of charges that your hero has. So as long as your hero hasn't run out of charges, your clone can always use the active. So in each uh, activation of the clone, you can always use one drum charge. So that's um, very powerful. And uh, you can even use two drum charges in a single fight if you are fighting with both your hero and your clone. So I feel like drum is a very very strong item that is like reasonably good for farming, but also just allows you to fight in the early mid game. And so I'm just gonna see him farm for a very long time here. He's just gonna farm with his hero and then send his clone to dangerous places while he's taking on the safe farm with his main. Heroes. He uses the drum charge here, and as you're gonna see, next time the, the clone comes up, he's still gonna have six charges. It's just a really strong item, and uh, having those drum charges all the time is very powerful for fighting. And you saw him was even uh, queuing up that item first, so if you're having a good lane, you can just uh, go for this drum first, and just uh, then you're able to sort of fight with your team and not have to do this AFK farming. But um, if you're in a game like this, you can just uh, go for the Midas first and just uh, play for the late game. And Drum isn't just a fighting item, it's also a farming item. You see him farming this ancient stack here with his clone, just using Drum here over and over again. Also, of course, using Midas when it's off cooldown. So with those uh, two heroes together, you do a lot of damage, actually and can clear this ancient stack even though you don't have any sort of AoE damage. But uh, just like with a good, good kite you can do these ancients like reasonably fast and um, not uh, really take any damage with uh, just some good kiting and those bubbles. Uh, I find Imclaw which is uh, a good item on Arc Warden but even better item on Clinks so it's gonna give that to Clinks. Now the last patch you would almost always go for a Treads on Arc Warden just because it allows you to fight earlier and it's, it's just a very efficient item. But here you're building two other very efficient early game items the Hand of Midas and the Drum of Endurance. So it makes sense to lay treads for these items. And since you're already laying it so much, um, it's um, definitely an okay choice here to just skip um, treads entirely and just keep these brown boots to upgrade them later into Boot of Travel, which of course is an excellent item on Arc Warden. See a bit of a team fight going on, and you don't want to go into this team fight, it's too dangerous. He's just gonna send in his uh, clone to maybe do something, but uh, can't do anything either here. You just want to be safe with the main hero, because 
you are still um, quite squishy despite that level 10 talent, the new um, health talent at level, at level 10. You're still fairly squishy, you're still fairly easy to kill when they get on top of you. So just want to keep farming here at least until you get your first big item. And speaking of that, he's going for an MKB, which is a bit unusual. It's more common to go for Maelstrom into Mjolnir. But here he's playing against a uh, Wind Ranger, who of course has all that uh, evasion for Wind Run. So it's just really important to have an MKB against um, this hero. Um, I think in most games you still want to go for the Mjolnir. Of course, um, this build is a little bit less greedy. It just means that you just do a lot more single target uh, DPS and uh, that's like because even, even despite the nerfs MKB is still a very efficient single target DPS item and it's just a better item for fighting than uh, Maelstrom into Mjolnir. This team are coming in for a smoke gank, they find this um, Spectre and Spectre is not able to escape with her haunt so they won this fight, Spectre used her haunt so now they can possibly get something more. So in these fights, it's just very, very important that you position yourself very safely with your main hero and you can do aggressive moves with that clone. You can see the clone not really getting any kills here, but um, at least kept the enemy team at bay. So now they got two kills and haven't lost anything yet. And they, of course, they used the epicenter, so some ultimates being used, but uh, no heroes down and they're gonna go and uh, claim the tier 2 tower. Of course they have a lot of uh, damage here with that Klinks plus the Arc Warden. Emo has also gone for a Dragon Lance, another item that was um, buffed recently and it's just a really efficient item. Gives you extra range, allows you to stay further back and still do your job. Very important here on this hero and the stats are also quite nice. And of course has the upgrade possibility into a hurricane pike later and once again same concept you'll be in the front with your clone and main hero staying back and doing damage from the back lines but um, now his main hero is also kind of in danger but uh, they have enough numbers here to um, win that fight so they've you know it's it's not really a win it's a two for two so um, that's fine but because they're behind that's a a moderate win at least for them so they go up in net worth by like 200 and in experience by 1000. And now it's just back to farming. So now he has the Boots of Travel, which now makes the clone a lot better at split pushing. You just always teleport to one of the lanes, especially the side lanes, and push that out. You don't want to be too reckless with that because the clone does give a lot of gold and experience um, if, if it dies. But... Um, Still, just the ability to push out the side lanes is very valuable. So now you can just keep uh, using that clone to take the dangerous farm. It's gonna go in here for this fight. It's gonna try to find something, but uh, it's not really working out for him. But that's okay. It's a low commitment here, and his main hero is meanwhile safe and can just go back to farming. Now they want to go for this Roshan. They saw a lot of heroes at bottom, so they think they can get away with this. Of course, the, it goes really fast with um, all these heroes, with Arc Warden and Klinks in particular. So they get the Aegis, but Spectre Hearts in here, and they get a really strong Shackle Start here onto Venge and Arc Warden, and immediately burst the Aegis. And the clone is also almost uh, gone here, so it's just gonna have to fight with his main hero. And whenever the enemy t are on top of you, that's not going to go well for you here, so um, even though they got the Roshan, he dies twice and this is not um, a great fight. Klinks um, tries to make something happen and with a buyback from Arc Warden and the Boots of Travel, they can actually turn this fight around and get a whole bunch of kills here. Um, Rubik does not teleport out here, uh, stays in here because the fight is going well and they kill almost everyone, Wind Ranger makes it all alive. But um, still, of course, a great fight despite the buyback. A good gold swing here for them. And now Arc Warden is on towards Satanic. More, most often in this situation, you'd probably buy a BKB at this point. But um, in this game, BKB is not as strong because you still have the Berserker Skull that can disable you through that. 
and also just the the fact that you have the, the, this um, you know, uh, axe hero and the specter with her blade mail makes the extra uh, life steal from satanic uh, very powerful and yeah that's why it's going for, for this item uh, right now and it's just also an item just allows you to to scale better and you can still get the BKB later on if you need it but um, for now satanic is good enough to survive and you're actually gonna be quite tanky here with the uh, dragon lance and the satanic plus the level 10 talent and um, Aquan actually has a very good uh, strength gain 3.0 for a ranged hero is, is um, very strong. It just keeps pushing out the side waves with this uh, clone. Um, even though it doesn't have uh, Mjolnir, it still does quite a bit of damage and is able to kill these waves fairly quickly. Meanwhile, his main hero is on the safer part of the map um, behind some other heroes he has. So he's just going to keep doing this. And he is being a bit too ambitious here. Uh, of course, someone is going to come in here and, uh, and kill this. So, feeding a bit of experience there. But um, nothing major. He's just going to keep threatening, especially this bottom lane, because the enemy team doesn't really want to be down here. Now, he's pushed at the top wave because um, that's safer now, and uh, Klinks is already at bottom. So, he's going to put on pressure everywhere and just buy more and more time for his team. Because they're still somewhat behind in this game, and even though he's having an excellent game, all the other three cores in the enemy team are also having a good game, and uh, his other cores are not as farmed. Klinks is having an okay game, but the Sand King, it doesn't have very much net worth, so uh, they still have to be careful here. Notice that he still kept some charges on this drum, so as long as you have at least one drum charge, your Illu can always use the drum. So. You're going to be very conservative with your drum touches in your main hero and um, very liberal with your uh, drum on your clone because you can always use drum um, for each iteration here. Just, just using it here for farming, just to clear this creep a little bit faster. By the way, very weird axe build here. Trying this new build with the attacking prox counter helix and going into manta. Um, it's also going for an Agonims, which, uh, in case you didn't know, um, what Agonims does is it makes uh, Battle Hunger be an AoE and reduce um, damage, so it can be quite powerful. So in this fight, um, however, Axe not doing getting the most done here. Also, it's like I'm even if you're gonna go for this build, I still feel like you want to get a Blink, just so strong on Axe. But um, that is what he's going with here. So now with two heroes dead, of course they're gonna go into Roshan and this is gonna go very quickly and once again they're gonna have Arc Warden with an Aegis and they're gonna put the cheese onto Klinks. Still two heroes dead and they have the Aegis so they're gonna try to siege his high ground. They just keep going with this push and uh, just uh, hitting with the Klinks who uh, has BKB and cheese and the Arc Warden and his clones. They're going to chip down this Rax, and it's really hard for the enemy to actually initiate here. Uh, so yet they, since they don't have Haunt, so they take the melee Rax and then they just back off, because that is what they came for, and now it's time to go home, and they do this in a very disciplined manner, but they do lose the Sand King here, but that's okay. You're perfectly fine trading an offlaner for a Rax. Now there's a chance of a counter push, so he's gonna push out the top wave with his um, clone being really safe here and just waiting with the main hero in the base to not give the enemy any sort of pickup potential. But he doesn't have buyback, so if he, if he dies, uh, the Aegis doesn't, doesn't matter if he dies somewhere out on the map, he's just gonna die twice. So it's very important for him to, to be in a safe position, um, because if he dies without buyback here, the game might just end. Thing gets engaged here with a haunt, but Emo does not have Tempest double up. Um, Tempest double just uh, died down here, so he can't really fight very well. You don't really want to fight in this position, so they just accept that they just lose two heroes, and now they're gonna try to defend high ground. And of course, Ark one of the best heroes at doing precisely that. He's just gone for that Deadless build, 
He has a lot of damage, but not a lot of attack speed. So for this high ground defense, he's actually throwing the hyperstone into his inventory and backpacking the boots of travel because he doesn't need to move fast. Just needs to do a lot of damage, and that's exactly what he does here in this fight. So his tusk just gets punished for going onto the high ground, and they just keep chasing here. And now with the Aegis um, having expired, he can um, put his uh, boots of travel back into his. his uh, inventory and they can just keep chasing. Arc Ward naturally a very slow hero but um, with Boots of Travel he's actually reasonably fast and they can just keep chasing here. They want to go on, on Arc Ward but a very nice 4 star uh, saves him for a little bit here which is enough and he's, he gets quite low here but um, with his Satanic he's actually able to uh, heal back up and they kill the Tusk and the Switch Doctor is trying to escape but um, it's not looking good for him. Actually gets him a good ultimate and uh, actually makes it out of here. So very nicely played here from him. But still of course a hugely one fight for Ark Warden and his teammates. So going to try to get this tower but it's not quite going to happen. But um, with the Satanic, he just does so much damage on this tower and doesn't even lose the clone. So that just shows you the power of Satanic. Especially against uh, these heroes like uh, Spectre and Axe. They just do so much damage to you when you attack them. And he's found the absolutely best the tier 4 item, the Illusion Escape. This not only allows him to make some super strong illusions, also increases the damage of, uh, his, of these illusions and of the Tempest Double. So just a very strong item on on most uh, carries and on Arkwood in particular, it's um, very powerful. So he's now consumed his Moonshard and he's getting uh, Manta Style. Manta Style is also a very strong item on Arkwood. Allows you to do some nice split pushing, allows you to also use that on your clone and just uh, keep up the split push for longer. So basically this uh, in a way extends the the duration of your push because you have this um, this uh, clone and he can um, he can push in the, in the side lane and then once he's about to expire you can use the manta and they have, thereby always have some units uh, pushing out a particular side lane also just in a fight uh, manta illusion just add a lot of damage if you don't die even though you don't have the best stats in arc warden but a very low agility gain still you can do a lot with um, with manta and also just uh, the ability to dispel all the annoying stuff here on um, on Radiant side. In particular like this uh, um, Battle Hunger with the AOE Battle Hunger and uh, Aghanim Scepter. Uh, it's actually quite annoying so being able to dispel that is nice. And um, they win this fight very convincingly and now they want to push. So look at all these illusions coming in. Um, they just uh, going to siege this tower, even though he has uh, um, backed up protection, it still takes so much damage. Um, so, if you don't have uh, sufficient naivety to clear this up, uh, this just does so much damage. And um, that's even with the damage reduction that uh, buildings have against illusions. So, they take this one, uh, one lane, and now there's only the bottom lane left. Except for that range tracks, but I mean that's gonna fall very easily. And still have three heroes dead, but they see Roshan and they just decide, okay, we're just gonna go for this Roshan that's more important. Uh, because this is kind of risky because the enemy team is, is almost there, so they're just gonna use this Arc Warden with all the illusions here. Illusion Escape and Matter Style. He tried to get uh, these Rex. He sees the melee Rex not gonna happen, but he tries for the range tracks then instead. Not gonna get that either, but does a lot of damage and more importantly distracts the enemy team and uh, now they have plenty of time to be Roshan and get all of these goodies with the Agnus Blessing now on Klinks, allowing him to uh, make the Burning Army once again. So Arc Warden um, not even claiming the Aegis right now because he's already 6 slotted so it's um, better to have that on Klinks who is uh, not quite as farmed as he is. They go for the siege here, already claimed the melee racks, but um, now things are getting a bit bit ugly with the haunt coming in. And as always, you're gonna stay back here, especially since you don't have 
a BKB or an Aegis, anything like that. So Klinx gets um, gets killed now by a Wind Ranger, and Nonis is just sort of staying back here, protected by the um, burning army from Klinx. And his main hero is just gonna TP out it because the fight is not going well. Um, he's just gonna get out of here. They only have this one range tracks left here, so that's easily ratable. So as long as you don't die here, you're gonna be fine. He's gonna just gonna preserve his uh, his life, and uh, he does have buyback, um, so that's uh, good. But uh, you don't want to use it if you don't have to. So the push is coming in, and. They do have buyback on uh, Klinks, most importantly, as well as on Sand King. But um, they don't want to use it, they don't have to. But the enemy team now going for the throne. So Arc Warden, once again, you want to position yourself to the front with your clone and the back with your hero. So that's exactly what he's doing. Um, forgetting about the Satanic here a bit. Uh, could have used that a bit earlier. But uh, now he's using it at the last moment and it's not quite enough. So enemy team is trying to end the game right now but the buyback's now coming in actually Klinks buyback dead so things are go looking a bit grim here but this spectre is also very low so they do manage to um, get the defense here and at the same time these creeps are pushing in at the bottom so now that the ancient is defended you can uh, port down here with a clone and finish that range tracks and claim the megas but the game is not over because of that uh, it's very easy to lose the game with megas if you're if you're getting careless because you don't have a buyback on clinks so um, this game is not quite over yet but um, with two heroes dead they want to uh, see if they can maybe finish the game um, there's actually no buyback on these two heroes but they don't know that they, they have the timer, just uh, lacking a little bit of gold. Um, so they want to be quite careful here and uh, not throw this game. And here we have the ultimate 8 slotted Arc Warden. 6 very powerful items, plus Agnus Blessing, plus Moonshard. Now he has this um, clone with the double damage and uh, Haste Room, which he found from this um, Aghanim's uh, Runeforge. I tried to do something here, but. Um, against the entire enemy team even those double runes are not enough so that was a bit of a waste but it was worth a try so now they're just gonna ride out this game they just want to wait for their for their buybacks and uh, secure Roshan and um, then end the game if you're this far ahead you don't want to throw this uh, 50 minute game because you got impatient Wichita comes out to ward and is immediately initiated on by Sand King but Sand King is also kind of in a bad spot so honestly this is probably Sand King getting a bit impatient here but uh, now the fight is on so um, Arc Warden also coming in here and with all these uh, nice illusions Spectre is actually a lot less uh, scary so you can just uh, stand his ground here and uh, Spectre has to back off and this fight is uh, looking fairly good but we also have a Rubik buyback so he's coming back into the fight and the two heroes dead. I'm gonna try to uh, make something happen here. And once again, we just want to stay safe. This is a bit too far forward here, honestly, with Arc Warden. It's a bit playing a bit cocky here. Um, this is a buyback, so you can kind of afford it, but uh, this can very easily um, go wrong here. And you can see it's getting quite low here. And um, even though the Kind of winning this fight, the enemy are in their, in their base, they can buy back and just rejoin this fight very fast. And yeah, he's just gonna keep right clicking here and not do anything fancy. He's also just gone for the attack range and lifesteal talents and the attack speed talent. Nothing fancy, he just wants to um, not do anything stupid and uh, just have, just win with his um, superior farm. But uh, even so, the heroes are getting slowly whittled down and with the enemy team just being in their base, they have a quick advantage and eventually are able to, de to defend this. And now actually four people dead and there's a bit of danger here from the dire team. 
And a big part of the reason is just uh, like this initiation that Sanking did it was just not really necessary. Uh, you don't really need to fight here, you can just wait for the Roshan and uh, take the guaranteed win. And Emu is gonna um, buy back here preemptively, even though the team is not uh, yet pushing. But it's gonna use this um, time to, um, to take his clone downstairs and uh, try to force the enemy to come back and uh, keep them from, from pushing. And the idea is you draw the enemy here and then you can take a fight in, onto that axe in the mid lane. So um, that is the plan, they go on him, but his axe is very, very tanky. Let's like look at his armor. Um, so he doesn't die quite as easily and actually now Aqua is in, in big trouble. There's no buyback, there's no uh, satanic cooldown. So he has to just limp away here and he almost through the game here um, with this um, fancy move here on this axe. But he's just barely going to not make it. Um, so Ark Warden is dead here and now the game is in a lot of danger but you have the clone still in the bottom um, again trying to make something happen but at least succeeding in uh, delaying the game so now it's just a, a matter of hoping that the enemy team can't finish here um, and they have to use their cliff to defend the throne but the enemy just doesn't quite have the damage he to push through against this um, burning army. So they manage to defend their, their tier, tier 4 or tier ancient brother. And now with Spectre also dead for this long and no buying available, they can just wait this out, even find the Wind Ranger here and uh, kill her. She does a fire back. So now they can just go ahead and do the Roshan, get all the things. Um, uh, nice Aghanims for Sand King and with Ark Warden coming in here in a couple of seconds they can finish this game and claim the hard fought victory. If you like this game please give this video a thumbs up and spread the word of Obelisk to all your friends and Obelisk willing I'll see you next time.